To place a bay onto a drawing, select the scaffold tab, and then simply pick a new bay and drag it into position on the drawing. To make sure the bay is in the correct distance to the wall, we can drop on a dimension and then move the bay into position by either dragging it or using the cursor arrows on the keyboard. Remember, the further you zoom into the drawing, the more accurate this movement will be. There are several ways to edit a bay, and further in-depth information can be found regarding these in the Editing Bays video. Remember, before you can edit a bay, you must make sure it's selected. When a bay is selected, it will appear in yellow in the conceptual view, and a 2D drawing will display T, B, L and R. A bay can be selected either in your plan or within the conceptual view. Once selected, we can change the bay size by selecting the corresponding T, B, L and R at the top of the screen. In here, we can just select the size that we want to change the bay to. To delete a bay, select the bay and hit the delete base button. You can pre-select a bay size by selecting them first in the top screen and then by dragging the bay back onto the screen again. If we want to add another level to the scaffold, we can go down to Bay Level Editor and hit the Add Level. In this case, we'll add two more levels. Also within this dialog, you can change individual components on each level of the bay. Up at the top of the screen, you will see size settings. Within here, we could turn off, say, the guardrails and the tow boards on the B side, and this will affect every level of that bay. The next button, the bay details, in here we can do so many things, from change the number of guardrails, to type of material used for the tow boards and for the planks. We can also set a top elevation for suspender scaffold and ground elevations and jack heights. In the sides, we can turn the entire side off. We can also tell it the material to use for the ledges and the guardrails. In the verticals, we can turn the entire vertical on and off and also tell it what header type we want to use and the type of base we want to use, for, for example, a screw jack or a caster. Finally, the last button is a plank direction. This will rotate the planks by 90 degrees in the bay. To copy a bay, we can press Ctrl on the keyboard and then to holding the bay down with your mouse, you can drag it to one side like we did with the walls earlier on. Another way to copy the bays is to select the bay and then the side you want to copy to and use Add Bay to Side. By doing this, the bays are automatically joined and refreshed. So as you can see here, the internal guard rods have been put back on again. To turn them off, select both bays, into size settings, and turn off the guardrails and tow boards. The final way of copying the bays is to select the end bay and use a wheel at the top. In here, we can tell it which side we want the bays to be placed to, so we'll add two more bays to the drawing. And as you can see, these are now shown in the model view. Thank you.